And there it goes. Thanks, guys. That Thanks, was Jeff. awesome. So many incredible creatures with powerful stories to tell in Alaska. But I think this story of the bumblebee is just as important, just as exciting, and just as fun. This was awesome. Thanks. Remember, conservation takes action. Volunteer in your community. Enjoy your local wildlife. And defend animals wherever you can. Boy, they love this fireweed, don't they? It's like their favorite thing. This is Eyewitness News. Now at four, new details about the historic criminal indictment of former President Donald Trump. Hello and thank you for joining us. You're watching Eyewitness. Law enforcement is bracing for protests. Yeah, they don't want to see a repeat of January 6th. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Souter joins us now live from the newsroom with the very latest. Leanne? Jury Michelle, Trump supporters speaking out today. Rallies happening here in the Southland. Meanwhile, across the country, preparations are underway for the former president's arraignment. <laughs> In New York City, crews have been putting up fences all around the courthouse where Trump is set to appear on Tuesday. All across the city, in fact, authorities have been on heightened alert since the announce or the indictment was announced, I should say. The NYPD is preparing for the potential of massive and possibly violent protests. All 3,500 officers are out on the streets making their presence known. Officials keeping a close eye on social media for any possible threats. Now, a handful of supporters, Trump supporters, have shown up outside Trump home in Florida. Authorities there also increasing security, but the main area of concern is New York City and the potential problems that could come with Tuesday's arraignment. I think they're treating us with uh, extreme caution and preparedness. So the Port Authority, Penn Station, Grand Central, anybody coming into the state, we're going to see large groups forming if they are, and then they'll be monitored that way. So they won't be closing down any streets. We can't have that. With an unprecedented indictment comes immense security challenges. The NYPD, along with court officers, U.S. Marshals, and the United States Secret Service, they are now all running through the logistics of how Tuesday's historic arraignment of the former president will go down. Officials are even conducting a dry run of Trump's movements, including his motorcade arrival, how he will get into the courthouse, and what the arrest process will even look like. Officials in New York say so far, no credible threats have been made to the city, but they aren't taking any chances and say they will be prepared for any potential issues. Live in the newsroom, Lee Hyun Suter, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Leanne, thank you. And stay with Eyewitness News for continuing coverage of this unprecedented historic indictment. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll have new details on the possible charges former President Trump is facing and what to us expect ahead of Tuesday. Now to another major story affecting millions nationwide. Severe weather, including tornadoes ripping across swaths of the country, killing at least 11 people and hospitalizing dozens more. That severe weather is on the move once again tonight. Here's ABC's Jacqueline Lee with how residents are dealing with its aftermath. Residents picking up the pieces after dozens of reported tornadoes tore through the Midwest and South. Homes and businesses destroyed. At this nail salon in Little Rock, Arkansas, employees and patrons taking cover in the back. It was about 20 to 25 of us. We ran to the back area, closed the door, huddled together, and just prayed for our lives. Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders declaring a state of emergency to assist state and local law enforcement in visiting this heavily damaged fire station. I think the real story here isn't the damage that happened, but it's the heroes that were born out of the tragedy. And the fact that we have firefighters who, despite the fact that they had a tornado literally coming through their station, were worried about the community. That tells you who they are. Further east in Tennessee, journalist Nick Sorter posting these images to social media saying he thought he was going to die after his vehicle was picked up and tossed off the road. In Belvedere, Illinois, west of Chicago, chaos inside the Apollo Theater. The roof collapsed at the Apollo. There were people inside, I don't know how many injured. 260 people inside. One of them did not survive. Officials say dozens were injured.